Welcome to this week's video. Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic week. So what I'm doing here, these are um, pair of dividers and this is how I measure things before putting them on my circle cutting jig on my bandsaw. I just find it's, uh, it's a lot easier to do it this way and you know that it's always going to fit correctly. Um, although you'll see in a little bit that I had to trim one up a little more. So, but Anyway, this is a circle jig, and I actually did a short video on this, if you're curious. Uh, and it works absolutely fantastic. I'm totally happy, and I'm glad that I made this. Uh, it makes life so much easier when it comes to uh, trimming things up to put them in the in the casting buckets that I use. And there you can see, I just need to trim a little bit off in order to fit the other pieces in there. So that wasn't really the cutting jig. It was actually me. And I've got a brass brush mounted in a Jacob's chuck on the drill and just clean up the surface of all that that gnarly uh, box elder burl that's actually quite sharp that's why i'm wearing gl uh, gloves you can easily cut your uh cut your hands on it uh but it gives you a really unique look and it's fantastic stuff and i should mention that this is an, an urn for heather and her family unfortunately heather lost her father last year so this is an urn for him You may notice from the opening that there's some different pieces here. Uh, the great thing about having a lot of this kicking around is you can kind of custom cut things to make them fit. And uh, I'm just using hot melt glue to hold it in place. No mold release this week. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, anyway, the hot melt glue does a good job holding it in place. And that way, it, you know, I want these pieces to maintain their spacing uh, for the resin to give me the desired look that I'm going for. Deep cast again this week. Actually, we pretty much do all three epoxies from Desire Epoxy this week. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that you do not need a pressure pot to do resin casting. Um, I prefer to use one, but you do not need one. Sky blue, that's what uh, Heather was looking for. So that's why we're going with the sky blue. And along with that, a little bit of mother of pearl, just to give us, you know, a real kind of rich pearly flowing look if you follow and there you get a look at the epoxy uh, again this is one of my favorites for sure uh, the sky blue and the rainbow blue are probably two of the most popular blues that I do on the on the channel here um, I can't remember how much this was. Three liters, I think, is what it ended up being, somewhere around there. Um, and again, you got to use the deep cast when you're when you're using um, this much resin. If you try to use the Pro Series, uh, it's going to overheat and it's going to have a ton of issues. So deep cast for any of these deep castings, as the name says. I figured it was best to put this in the vacuum chamber, and it always surprises me how much air comes out of this uh, dried box elder burl. Amazing. All right, that's been an hour. Let's get this in the pressure pot and we'll see you guys in 72 hours. All right, it's been 72 hours. Actually, it's been a little longer than that. And, uh, Looks like she's all cured and ready to go. Now, I didn't put any mold release in here, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, yep, <laughs> right back where we used to be. Uh, I might have to drill a hole. There it is. I don't know, I like that color of blue, that's for sure. All right, uh, let's get, let's get this on the lathe. All right, so we got a center mark there. Find center up here. 
So just like in the bucket here, I'm using the dividers to find center and just, you know, moving it around till it's touching all the way around the casting and that should give you um, pretty much dead center. Uh, it's important to have a good flat area for the drive center and the live center to sit. So I'm just using the cut saw sander here to grind away all that material so that it doesn't interfere with either one of those uh, centers. Using the Hercules again this week. Um, this clip is actually in real time to give you an idea. Uh, and, you know, you can see it's pretty much on center. It's not off at all. Um, I know that a lot of times when the footage is sped up that it's hard for people to judge how fast I'm going. So I'm going to try and leave a lot of these real time clips in here that, that I can to give you an idea. So that, you know, I, when I first started resin, it was, it was totally new to me. Turning wasn't, but the resin was, and I wasn't sure how fast and how slow I should be going. So, you know, I, I understand that a lot of people are watching my channel because they're, they want to learn how to turn. So that's, you know, I'll, I'll try and throw those real time clips in there to give you an idea. Um, actually how fast I'm going. I should also mention that the lathe is at 475. That's what the speed is. And of course, the goal here is to just get a round casting, um, whittle away any uh, unnecessary resin and any wooden pieces that are an issue. Uh, you would, you can see some voids uh, that was at the top of the casting and was totally expected. So it's it's um, just get it on the lathe, get it rounded, and clean up the top and the bottom and then go from there. When I do these castings, um, I I do try, when I'm putting things in the bucket, say, okay, this is gonna be the top, and this is gonna be the bottom. Um, sometimes I deviate from that, but the, the piece where you see the voids, that's gonna be the top, and the very bottom is on the, uh, the tailstock side of the lathe. It's a personal choice. Um, I was really concerned about volume here. I needed an urn that would that would hold an individual that was 200 pounds at their passing. And this was gonna be really tight as far as uh, getting that done. But, you know, I didn't really have very many uh, bigger pieces. Well, I didn't have bigger pieces of box or burl. So this was kind of it. Um, and it just fits, just barely fits. So, uh, happy about that. Um, blocked out a little bit maybe, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's a, not an easy thing to, to figure out in a, in a casting. I can measure the volume easy enough afterwards. Uh, but trying to figure out how big of a casting you're going to need, uh, for me, I've, I've done a few urns now and you know if it's if it's an individual that's say 150 pounds that's usually not an issue i can make those urns fairly easy uh but anything over 200 i'm really pushing uh the limits of my tools as far as uh having the correct tooling to to make larger urns um that that are needed of course so this is the top of the urn and I'm just turning away all that um, burl that was protruding through the top. Uh, again, worried about size. Uh, it's a good thing that this piece did go into the vacuum chamber uh, because I don't know if I had just taken the epoxy and thrown it in on top of, of the burl, I don't know if there would have been enough. Um, I don't know if the, the casting would have been large enough. So, you know, it's really ideal to put these in the vacuum chamber prior to putting it in the pressure pot and the combination of the of the two will push that resin into areas that you know ordinarily it wouldn't go if you're casting it on a bench and like i said earlier you don't need a pressure pot but when it comes to making turned pieces like this on a lathe um, a pressure pot is probably going to give you a better casting so that's why i use one and that's i have two of them actually this burl, while it is beautiful, is very difficult to work with because it's got a lot of dry rot in it. So, you know, if you've got fresh cut burl, you're probably not going to be dealing with dry rot issues. 
All right, so I probably should have done this earlier. Um, I'm putting a waste block on the bottom of the casting here, and I'm just making sure that things are roughed up really good. And here we're using the two hour epoxy from Designer Epoxy, and I'm going to use it on the bottom here, and I'm also going to use it, I'm going to color a little bit of it and fill in some areas on the very top as well. It probably would have been better to uh, tape that block in place because it kept moving around on me. Um, so in the future, I'll <laughs> I'll try and do that. Uh, and again, just filling these voids with the epoxy. You know, I, was, I did this about an hour before lunch, so that's a good time for it to set up. So it's ready to turn when I come back. And while we're at it, we might as well mix up some Pro Series and do the lid as well. In all these pores, I tried to replicate the intensity of the color, uh, you know, just holding the cup up to the to the urn itself and having a look at it, um, adding a little bit of mother of pearl in there just to mimic what's going on in the in the base of the urn as well. Uh, you don't need a lot of mother mother of pearl, that's for sure. I do find that mother of pearl mixes in nicer with mechanical mixing. So if you're mixing it by hand, you got to really make sure that you mix it quite well. And I put that piece in the pressure pot as well. I wasn't in a huge hurry, so I figured that I would turn it the next day. Here I'm just using the gouge to uh, turn down the what's going to be the waste block, essentially. And this is a piece of hard maple, so it's a good candidate for that. I originally had a large foot on the base of this, but I thought that it was going to interfere with my design. So I figured that I would turn it down so that uh, the small jaws from my Stronghold Chuck could hold it. Since this piece is just mounted between centers, you got to be really careful that you don't make that little nub too small. Because if you do, it'll break off and then you're in a lot of trouble. It's a really heavy casting, so you want to make sure that you leave a fair bit of um, meat there so that that doesn't happen. This is another real time clip. And, you know, I'm just trying to de define the bottom part of the urn. Uh, sometimes I find it's, it's easier just to, to pivot the Hercules back and forth when you want to do a transition and then just fill it in afterwards. Filling it in is probably the wrong choice of words, blend it in like I'm doing here. And when I shut the lathe off, you'll see some areas that have got some chip out. And that's, you know, just because maybe things aren't perfectly round or I'm being too aggressive. Uh, when it comes to turning resin, and I've said this in the past, slow and steady wins the race. You cannot be aggressive with resin. If you do, it's going to either explode on you or you're going to have massive amounts of, of chip out and you'll have to alter your design. So... Just go easy with it and you shouldn't have any issues. And here's the first real look that we've had of the uh, the resin and the pearl together. And 
you know, it, it's it's going to be a very, very pretty piece of wood. All right, so on to hollowing. Uh, of course, we got to get a hole first. I think this is a three-quarter inch drill bit. And then I switch out to an inch and three quarters, maybe. And um, the inch and three quarters actually was sharper than the smaller one, so it seemed to work better. And you'll see me using a brass punch, and all I'm doing is reaching into the bottom and, you know, eyeballing it on the top uh, to make sure that I'm, I don't go through the bottom of this thing, because that would be, at this point, devastating. <laughs> a lot of time, money, and effort into this piece at this point. All right, so those of you who are new to the channel, this is my one-way hollowing system. It's a captive system, as you can see. Uh, right now, I've got the straight boring bar in there with a teardrop cutter. Uh, there is a laser right here, and you'll be able to see it drop off on the side of the urn once we reach three. I've got to set it set at three quarters of an inch right now. I'll change that as we go. And of course, got this big beautiful uh, steady rest that my son made for me all right let's get to it so of course this is actually pretty difficult to film because you know you guys can't really if you had a camera on the very end of the boring bar maybe that would be exciting but uh it's just something that's really hard, hard to film i do my best here to give you an idea as to how things are going uh, the problem with this steady rest, and when we go to a side shot, I'll, I'll point it out to you. Uh, you can see I've got the laser adjusted right on the very tip of that cutter, so I know exactly where it is inside the casting. But the drawback from that steady rest is the way that it's shaped. So I think that I'm actually going to alter the shape of the steady rest and have the, the pieces on the side that go straight up extend so that it doesn't interfere with the top part, um, the laser arm that you see on the very top that's holding the laser. Uh, when we get to a side shot, you'll, you'll definitely be able to see it better. It's a fantastic steady rest, but I do think that we can make some improvements on it. And I don't know, I might even make a short little video on it. We'll have to see. I don't do a ton of hollowing, so, you know, it's not a huge thing to me, uh, but, you know, if I can make it better, I certainly will. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm pretty much a bowl maker. That's what I love to do. Um, making these urns, these hollow pieces, though, they're pretty, pretty fun and pretty spectacular. Not very easy on your body, though. A lot of bending over. All right, I'm going to try and give you a little look in here. Uh, we do have some thermal cracks happening, which are not cool. I don't know if it's going to, I don't think it's going to matter. But um, anyway, that's what it looks like in there. So I know it's tough to see. Bottom's pretty decent. Now we'll just move up the side walls and get this done. All right, so before we carry on, I just want to let you know that I put some thin CA from Star Bond down in the crack here. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but just to make sure that it doesn't migrate any further, I thought I would do that. And of course, set it with the accelerator. That way we can move on with the project. So I totally forgot this, but there is a little extension piece that you can screw on the end of this boring bar and move that cutter further to the left. And if I hadn't been using it on this piece, I probably could have done probably around 70 or maybe even 80 percent of this this uh this casting so you know it, it's um i don't know does that mean i got too many tools that i forget what i have <laughs> i don't know so this is what i was talking about earlier there's the laser um above the casting and while it doesn't hit here it certainly does later on so the, my idea is to just lengthen those those upright pieces, probably about the length of how the the, um, the pieces are turned in. And I'll have to alter the arms that hold the wheels as well. And then I think that it the laser won't interfere with any of it. Uh, you know, my son, you know, he actually made this in high school, my son Braden. And um, I just <laughs> made a diagram and said, here, make this. And, uh, but I totally forgot about the laser being an issue at the top. So now we know we can alter this and um, make it better. So 
So I, I like this system, but the one thing that I don't like about the system is the bent bars aren't as robust as the straight boring bar is. So, you know, you, you tend to get a fair bit of chatter and vibration when you're kind of at full extension, uh, either in the base or to the left. Um, so, you know, if, if I had, say, another bar that's similar to the straight boring bar and had a curve to it, I think that it would, you know, be a, a more robust system and it would probably take a lot of the vibration out. So that first one was the double bent bar. This is called the bent bar. And this is the one that's going to really get me into the far left of the urn here to clean out that material. And again, you know, you've got to be, I, I can't stress this enough, but you know, you've just got to try and be as smooth as you can. Uh, I do find that I can go back and forth, like in and out with it easily enough. Uh, going down into the base and then pulling it out towards the top of the urn tends to maybe cut better than trying to do it any other way. But if you do decide to try, you know, some of this hollowing, uh, you got to do what works for you and not what works for me. At this stage, I've taken the laser off because it was hitting on uh, the bar above, so there was no point in really even keeping it in play i just kind of moved it out of the way so you know um <clears throat> i think that these laser systems are, are fantastic systems uh kind of takes a lot of i don't want to say the skill out of it but you know you can set that cutter at a half inch and go until the laser dri dips off the side of the bowl and you know that you've made your half inch wall thickness and it's not as risky as doing it blind Last little bit of cleanup here. I just got the boring bar in just to clean up the very base of the bowl before we start sanding. All right, so here's where we're at. Uh, we're down to about uh, almost a half inch wall thickness and I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, you'll notice maybe some chip out over here. Uh, it doesn't matter what I do, I just keep getting it and it's getting thinner and thinner. So uh, we're just gonna have to sand it out. Anyway, it's pretty clean in there, it's not too bad. All right, speaking of that, let's do some sanding. So I've just got a little extender in here and that was a two inch sanding pad. And I think it's down to about an inch and a half now. And the three and a half inch dipple discs wrap around it real nicely. So you can get in there and, and clean up the base of that. And you can come quite a ways up the sidewall as well. You're not going to get it all the way up to the top. But it does a pretty good job um, cleaning up most of the urn. So if you haven't used this, give it a try. It certainly uh, works well for me anyway. On these hollow pieces, I like to use uh, resin finish on the inside. Uh, this is the two hour epoxy again from Designer Epoxy. And I always tend to maybe mix up more epoxy than I need to, uh, recently anyway. And uh, they actually, Designer Epoxy sent me some liquid pigments that actually are very, very intense in color. And I figured that I would take the leftover and use the liquid pigment here, the deep blue sea. And I mean, just one little drop of that will give you quite an intense color. So anyway, that's a new line that they've come out with. Uh, check them out because it's looking pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna let that drip dry overnight. It'll probably weld itself to this rack, but it should be able to easy, be easy to break it free. All right, it is late and I am beat. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. You see there's some leftover resin from when it was sitting on the rack. Uh, I'll give you a look inside here. Again, it's gonna be kind of tough too, but anyway, things nice and shiny. There's a few bubbles in there. I'm not real concerned about that. Uh, it's important that any of the cracks have been filled if there were any and we got a good solid piece all right let's get the outside done and get our first coat of finish on
So I want to use the cone center, but I can't really use it until I clean up all that epoxy. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using the Osprey. There you go. You can see that it's supported now. Now I prefer to use the Osprey when it comes to doing fine little detail work like this in close to that cone center, maybe down near the base uh, where, the, where the waste block is glued onto the base of this. Uh, you know, you certainly can use it to do the entire urn if you wanted to, or the outside anyway. And, um, but anyway, some people ask me, you know, if I was going to get a tool, which one would I get? And, you know, the pretty much the go-to tool that I'm using right now is a Hercules, but it sure is nice to have that Osprey to get in there and just to work in those tight little areas where the more robust Hercules may have an issue getting into. And I should also mention that one of the main reasons for that is because the cutter is smaller and the shaft on the tool is smaller, so you can get into those tighter little areas. I figured that I would take some of the shine off the inside of this. So, you know, I sand it to 180 inside to this urn. That's, that's, I didn't really see the need for it to go any higher. On the outside, I started with 60, and again, this is a three and a half inch dimple discs. And again, your discount codes are in the description down below if you need any stuff. Uh, make sure to check them out. And I was going to say I was sending from 60 to 800, like I always do on these resin pieces. Back with a star bond again, a couple little areas that needed to be filled, not very much. This piece was uh, was pretty uh, pretty good that way. Uh, by the way, the crack on the inside, the thermal crack was not an issue. It got turned away, so we're all good there. Uh, again, once it goes back on the lathe, grind away any of that excess CA glue before you carry on sanding. Here I've switched to the air sander because I was having an issue getting in around the base. So an air sander is a good choice. And of course, the brown triple E from the be all buffing system is the last step before we do any finish. Well, second last. Last step is putting on the denatured alcohol to clean off any of that buffing compound. And there you can see our beautiful urn. Absolutely fantastic. Love that resin for sure, for sure. And the burl, well, it's pretty awesome too. So there's the denatured alcohol, just clean on the surface, prior to finish. Now, I wanted to put a glue block on the bottom of this, uh, that way I can handle it. And there's the glue block with hot melt glue that's melted in an electric frying pan. Here's our lid. And again, it is made from the same box seller burl as the urn is. And um, I figured that the best way to do this was to put it on my vacuum chuck. If this piece was maybe another quarter of an inch in diameter, it would have been better. You, it's hard to tell here, but you can actually, it was actually moving on me and being sucked in on one side because it just barely fit on there. So, you know, in a perfect world, it would have been a little larger. Here I'm just using, you know, my calipers. Uh, I've got the measurement set from the urn and just trying to sneak up on it. I don't want, you know, a super tight fit on this. Uh, but, you know, it, it's nice to have a snug fit if you can if you can get it. I ended up just misses, missing this one a little bit, I think. Anyway, we'll have to see once all the finish goes on, all the pieces. So I sanded the bottom of the lid to 320 and then turned it around, put it in my stronghold chuck. I am not concerned about any bite marks that the stronghold chuck may leave behind uh, on the tenon because once the ashes go in it, I, I tell people to use a clear silicone and to just put it around the tenon where it meets the underside of the lid and um, just drive it home. And I mean, Nobody's going to ever see uh, the, the tenon that's on the lid anyway, so uh, I didn't see any need to hold it in a matter where it wasn't going to get marked up. It didn't really leave much for marks in it anyway. 
And just like the body in the urn, everything was sanded from 60 to 800. All right, we're finally to the first coat of finish. Now, this is what I'm using. Waterlux sealer and finish, and it is the medium sheen. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in this, so I thought I would show the can again. Anyway, that's what I've been using, and uh, it's been pretty popular on my YouTube account, that's for sure. And I'm sure that it's going to look fantastic on this urn as well. Well, 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 what do you think of that? Wow. I don't know what I like better. The resin or the burl. Beautiful. Especially on the top. Resin is fantastic. All right, I'm going to try and second coat this today, even though it's getting later here in the day. Because I'm running out of time, and it looks like this video is going to be late. Beauty. All right, well, there's the top. It's pretty darn nice, too. I'm just going to leave it in the chuck. I don't need this chuck today, so I'll second coat it. And then this one will be probably done. It's got a lot of resin uh, has penetrated the wood, so uh, there's one little area here. Where it hasn't, but we'll see. See you tomorrow. So it is the next day, and just like I always do, this is the brown Triple E. I always use that between coats, and then of course the denatured alcohol to clean off any of the buffing compound. As you can see, the urn didn't get, it's not perfectly on center, but you know, that's not a real big deal. Uh, it's just there uh, for finishing purposes and not turning purposes. All right, well, this is technically the third coat. What I did last night was I come out here uh, late in the evening and I just put the water locks on the wooden pieces and I didn't put any on the resin uh, prior to buff. So it's not a full third coat but technically I guess it is. If you're curious, the resin really only needs one coat of finish where the wood needs multiple coats because it absorbs the finish and the resin does not. What do you think of that? Beautiful. Amazing, amazing, amazing. That burl, that sky blue, fantastic. If you're curious what that background noise is, that's my tractor outside warming up because we got yet another snowstorm last night. There's the lid. She's a beauty too. All right, well, here's where we are. Uh, it's late. Thursday and if I don't get this uploaded, it's not going to happen. So as you can see the glue block is still on the bottom of this uh, Here's the lid a little little loose in the lid. I Don't think I don't see that as a big problem Like I said a little bit of clear silicone underneath the lid here and once it goes on it should be just fine uh, There is no finish on the very bottom of the lid So I want to put a couple of coats on there and if I put a couple of coats around the edge of the tenon, it will certainly tighten this up as well. And it may actually fit properly then too. Uh, so you want to take that off so it doesn't fall off. Uh, as far as the, the urn itself, I mean, wow, I know I say this a lot, but that sky blue and the mother of pearl combined with the, uh, the box holder burl is just spectacular. I mean, that right there, like, wow. Beautiful. Lots of red in this, in this box of burl, too. 
I don't know if you're gonna be able to see down inside or not. Not really. Uh, it is gonna have a resin bottom. And what I will do is I will post this on my Instagram and business Facebook. That way, if you haven't subscribed to that, you can do that too. Uh, it ended up being nine, in, nine inches across and about six and a half inches tall. And I know there's gonna be some people ask, um, there's probably, if I had to guess, 25 to 30 hours in that piece. But that's up there, that's probably up there on the scale, maybe in the top three of things that I've made, where I would say that it's one of the nicest things I've ever made. Uh, talking to Heather, she, she loves a piece, so that's fantastic. Uh, always a little bit of a worry when you're doing commissions like this. So I'm glad that she and her one daughter, I think she was talking to, are really happy with this piece. So that, that does my heart good. Thank you. Um, okay, well, that's it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this week's video. And of course, that's where we're going to get the next winner of the 35, or sorry, the 40,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. We're going to pick from the comments. So please leave a comment down below. Uh, and if you can share with your friends, I would really appreciate that as well. Thank you so much for doing that. And of course, don't forget that thumbs up. Uh, what are we doing next week? I don't know. <laughs> the walnut platter is still sweating out a little bit of epoxy. It's been in my kiln now for two weeks. Uh, but, you know, I think that it's coming to an end. So hopefully... Next week, we'll be able to do like a rescue video on that because I mixed the epoxy wrong. And uh, if not, it'll be hopefully something cool. So make sure you come on back for that. Uh, don't forget about our sponsors in the description down below if you need any stuff. And like I said, please leave a comment down below. Well, that's it. Till next week, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell. Please share with your friends. See you next week.